Hello, this is Everett Pierce, and today is June the 12th, 2017, and it's 1 48 p.m. Arizona time. Now, the topic of this video is a single word, a single word, and the word is belief, or believe. Now, before we get into this, we really need to kind of break it down into its raw essence of what we're talking about. As we know with when it comes to words, the application of words and the meaning of words depends on the application of it, the usage of it. Now, in regards to this links into terrorism. Now, believe. Believe is a verb. And say, what? Well, what is believe? Believe what? It's basically actions that coincide with our other statements, which is, we hold these truths to be self-evident. We hold. We hold what? We hold many things. Belief systems. Ways of doing things. Ways of thinking things. So, just staying focused on belief. So, in terms of the ideology or radicalized is Islamic individuals out there that their concept is death death to the disbelievers and the core word of that is believe disbelievers so the opposite of that is a believer and the core word of that is believe okay so to get a quite understanding of this because the word believe, just like say a mom and dad come together and they yield the third element, meaning child. Meaning you have to start from the very beginning, just like a number system. Zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Okay? So what would believe in the zero level of evolution? Energy. So in the beginning was the word and the word was God okay in the beginning energy became so it's either energy means in a mass energy mass form it's an action it's doing something and the opposite of that is it doesn't exist it is doing nothing and if it's doing anything is the mere thought of it existing but other than that you know, like nothing. If you think of nothing, or you try to imagine nothing, it only exists in your thoughts. But you don't have anything in terms of description outside of that. Okay, so, so in the beginning, there is life and there's death. Okay, well, life and death, as we see, we see a lot of life and death, but forever life and forever death. So, in terms of energy, it is energy is forever in an infinity quality, forever evolving and forever existing. The opposite of that would be extinction. Okay, now I know that, and we're not going to, you know, discuss this too much in this video, but there's a difference between Lucifer and extinction. The thing is, Lucifer is, over the course of man's timeline, has misunderstood many things. And we're going to point those little elements out of misunderstanding things. And it will help to open up your eyes to understand, put your evolutionary glasses on, to understand the human behavior. Okay, so, forever life and extinction. Is extinction real? type energy. I use the word extinction. Another form or word that's been associated with extinction is the devil. The devil is nothing even remotely close to Lucifer. Ex or the devil. That it was a symbolism to represent extinction. Because extinction, if you are forever life, your spirit, you represent forever life so as an opposing force the yin yang as we know with the Asians forever, li forever life 
is extinction. So this extinction spirit is real. It's just like you and me. It has an intelligence. It has a personality. It has abilities. But extinction operates from a different realm of energy. But it's still interconnected because all energy is connected in that sense. Meaning that if we, if life as we know it, like on this planet, just went carelessly, we would all find our path or find our way onto the path of extinction and we would no longer exist. So, but even so, if say there's no life form of the human race, the human race with 50 million shades of brown, tallness, heaviness, skinniness, blue eyes, green eyes, black eyes, brown eyes. So we would still exist, in, but in a different realm. Meaning there would still be evidence of bones somewhere. Just like I was saying, just the thought of nothing. Okay, there would still be evidence of, but when, when you are in a state of just being an exhibit like T-Rex or Raptor is you represent now a symbolism of extinction. So belief, belief is inseparable to evolution. And that's why in our America's constitution, we use very particular words. We hold these truths to be self-evident. As soon as these truths hit a realm, a plane of not being self-evident, meaning I, I found another truth here. And I'll, I'll use an example of the stone wheel and the rubber tire. We were holding the stone wheel. We hold these truths that it was going to help our lives become better. And then up to the point we design, we discover how to make a rubber tire. We found that this rubber tire head is far superior than a stone wheel. It adds comfort. It, so it starts adding up of its characteristics of being superior than a stone wheel. So if you need something to get you around and you're being shot at, then you'd want a stone wheel because a stone wheel would uh, repel a bullet. Okay. But the, for the prime purpose of evolution, the term belief is, and we'll go back to the beginning of time. So the actual word belief in the zero category has to come down to the essence of forever life or forever death. So you have two choices, democracy, two or more choices. Okay, so, and it looks like, well, what if I don't want to pick forever life or forever death? Then, then that's like, depending on how you live the remaining of your life, will it depend on which category you will fall into. And chances are, more than likely, you'll fall in the category of, of extinction. So, you have two choices, essentially. Either you're about forever life, or forever death, means extinction. So, belief if anything, in the beginning stages of belief, is are you a believer of forever life? Means you see, you see enough evidence and you want to be a part of evolution that it has the quality of infinity forever going on. Or do you want to take the perspective of extinction? Now, once you enter the extinction, then you become just a memory, if at best, a memory of those who are of forever life. Okay, so we'll just say you took the path of forever ex extinction. And we, we look back in our past and we say, yeah, you remember Jojo? Yeah, man, it's, it's a shame that he had to take the, he wanted the path of extinction. And so all I can do now at this point, there's no bones of him, there's no remnants of him, other than just the thought of him. Okay, if anything, it, it's a reminder what I don't want. So, unfortunately, there has to be some people 
in the extinction. In fact, and many of them that that has or there in terms of if there has to be some, and there is, it'll be those who actually want extinction. They don't want to exist. They 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 tremble at the thought of forever life. Okay, because they want extinction. And we have that's why in terms of our history, why it's important, because we use that to remember back to that time of what we don't want. So in terms of what we want to accomplish in life, you first have to start out, there's certain protocols. If you teach someone something, like being a teacher of teachers, you first teach them the wrong way, and then you move in to teach them the correct way. And say, well, we can have a video upon itself, is hierarchy, placement. Why do we put the zero, one, two, three, four, all the way up to nine? Why in that particular order? That is a thing of synchronization and hierarchy. Okay, so belief is, so it comes down to those two categories. So when the Islamic people, this ideology that they have adopted, and they say, death to the disbeliever. Basically, when they say that, they're saying, death to those who disbelieve. And who is the true disbeliever? Is those who want or do actions that is about extinction. That's in the true essence of it. Now, believe takes on a different dimension. That's why I said earlier in this video how a word can be applied, application, in many different ways. Okay, so in the beginning, say like in Genesis, and I, I have to teach the wrong way but it has many other teaching qualities about it. And I teach people that I say, here's Adam and we create Eve from his rib. That is the wrong way. You know, in a way it's fake news, okay? But I'm trying to give an example to the evolution at the time so they, for the sake of understanding, because you can't see a woman's egg, but they can see a man's sperm or his ejaculation. So that's why some of the Asians thought put more value to the men and the women when they they would force them to stay on their backs as not to spill the man's seeds. And they were actually thinking that it was what life came from actually came from the man. And that's why the value of men at in these early times of evolution that men had more value than the woman. The woman was just an incubator. And if she wasn't there, you know, they thought that they could actually find other ways to bring about life. But that's for the sake of understanding. Okay, so if this person over here says, I believe that Eve was created by Eve, or Adam's rib. Okay, so since he is believing something that is false, he's a disbeliever because now from my perspective, and I say, well, the man, the male, has a sperm, the woman has an egg, they come together, they fuse together into one, and that's and then life starts taking its course. And then when the child's born, then the spirit attaches to the flesh. Okay, so if he truly believes, he truly believes that Eve was created by the rib, well, as we know in 2017, with our science and our research and our discoveries, that there's no way that Eve could have been created through the rib of man. Okay, as what we have learned with the natural energy process. Okay, so that is a belief of a particular energy concept. Okay, and how the mixing of evolution, how some people can actually misunderstand things so the actual application of saying death to the disbeliever okay so look I'll give you a parable for the sake of understanding and I help you understand now no matter what started it you know collect like the chicken or the egg is what is say John and big John Something happened, and he got really angry at this village over there. And 
he when he and we everyone knows with John and he gets his mindset is he carries it out and and I if I hear John saying I'm gonna go over to that village and I'm gonna kill every single one I say why and oh I don't know they just they they don't like us and da, 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 you know he doesn't have any really valid reasons why he just feels the need to go over there so first of all that tells me he has a misunderstanding to something or something was brought about he misunderstood it so now because he feels this other village is a threat to him and our village so he's going to go over there and kill everyone in that village and there's no rhyme or reason for it and he says oh they're disbelievers and maybe it's something is there was a death upon one of our village people and he thought they are the ones responsible for that death. And he says, well, they must be about death, extinction. So he's going to go over and get rid of the extinct, what he thinks or perceives as being extinction. So, and I know this of John. And I said, you know, and what I know of John, I was like, if I don't stop John, he's going to go over there, he's going to kill. He will not stop until he kills everyone in that village. Okay, I'm about forever life. I know that his actions and intentions. So that means if I'm going to be about forever life, I'm going to have to invoke uh, a being the believer, even if it's something that's considered wrong. Meaning if I don't kill John, if I can't talk him out of it, I will try to talk him out of it. But if I see that I can't talk him out of it and he, he's on his way over to kill the village, then I must take it upon myself to kill John because he's not listening to logic or reasoning. And why would I kill John? Because if I don't kill John, John's going to kill those hundred people in that village. I'm acting as the believer. I mean, I'm trying to save the lives of that village over there because I know some... You know, somehow he's not listening to logic or reasoning. Somehow extinction has got control of his thinking. So that's an example in terms of believer and disbeliever. Is when you got groups of people out there, it's either you believe in what we believe in, okay, or die. Okay, that's not how level zero of belief. It's about forever life or forever death or extinction. So that's the mix-up when it comes to, you know, the disbeliever. The true application that was intended for the, the word disbeliever, death to the disbeliever, meaning that if I see this terrorist and I see him walking down the street with an AK-47 and he's got all this ammunition and I hear him chanting, death to Americans, death to Americans, then it's upon me as the believer to intercept him. Now, if he's got a gun, chances are talking is not part of that process. Because if he's talking about death to Americans, he'll probably want to kill me. So I will have to take ex whatever means possible to stop him. I, If I have a gun, I will first attempt to wound him, disable him. If he keeps insisting and tries to get back up, or tries to kill me, then I have to take deadly force to stop him. Because if I don't stop him, I know there's a hundred children over in that play yard. And he has enough ammunition to put a hundred bullets in every one of those kids. So that is to bring clarity about the term belief. Believer. It actually comes down to forever life and forever death. And of course what we know of that. So, over man's timeline, man is inserted using his, it could be Good Samaritan version of it, it could also be malicious part of it. It's like, you know, as people get favoritism to their own, own. We've had a multiple, in terms of the human behavior, in the beginning of Adam and Eve, you know, taken from the tree of good and evil. Everyone here on the sixth heaven is has chosen that tree of good and evil. So that's why we see the good, the bad, the ugly. We see an assortment of things. 
But as a melting pot of all these things, when they put together, they create a third element of something far superior and that what we vision of what heaven is. This is the sixth heaven. Then the next plane is the seventh heaven. What, so when people say he's going to heaven, meaning they're making an indication of they are going to the seventh heaven. Okay, the, which is interesting is like you're already on what is labeled as the sixth heaven. You will not go to the seventh heaven until you reach a certain criteria and abilities and skill sets and evolutionary levels. Otherwise, you just stay here. And if, if it becomes, you know, so essentially you're already in heaven. And reincarnation is inseparable to evolution. So just like heat and light is inseparable to, the, to a sun. So for any of the terrorist groups, it's like one thing I learned about human behavior is even if you show them proof beyond a shadow of a doubt, we hold these truths to be self-evident. I mean, I show them of self-evidence. I mean, they can see it, they can smell it, they can taste it. That still doesn't put them in the realms that they will accept it. They will say, we hold these truths. So you can't force anyone to hold any particular truths, even if you show them. But to bring about clarity is the disbeliever was not about what they're, what they're projecting. You believe in what we do or you die. This believer was those who act in their actions is about bringing extinction upon the human race. Because if you keep killing people and keep killing people and, and then you say you killed everyone on this planet and say you're a male. Okay, as we know, you have to have at least a male and a female. So if you kill everyone, because everyone at some point fell into the disbeliever, they didn't believe in what you believed in, then you will have to kill, you will be the only one on this planet. And then you won't be able to appropriate. I mean, you won't be able to bring about future generations. So sooner or later, extinction will take its place. And then human race, which we are identified by our bones, that's the remnants, you know, the red, white, and blue of our flag. Red represents, or the white represents the color of our bones. Red represents the, the substance that brings us life throughout our body. And water is what is needed to bring, breathe life. We, without water, we wouldn't be alive. So, so to bring clarity to the disbeliever and believer. So, like, if you, now you're in the different tones of it. Say you got the Christians and you got Islamic. And they say, well, the Islamic people, the disbelievers. And, no, you're the disbeliever. You're the believer. You're the disbeliever. Well, that's, you have an adopted concept of evolution that's still evolving. Just like back in Adam and Eve about the rib. At certain point, in your evolution and in your intelligence, you're going to say, wait a minute, there's no way from what I can, that a man or a human can be created from a rib. So there's got to be another way. And then you evolve and you say, oh, here we go. The woman offers the egg, the man offers the sperm, they come together, they merge. So that is part of the, you know, the evolutionary process. So that's why, you know, that's the premises that, these ideologies, you know, these radical Islam, they don't represent Islam. I know Islam better than anyone walking on this planet. I know Christianity better than anyone on this planet. Any religion on this planet, I know it better than they know it. Because my religion is known as the Trinity religion. It's basically all the religions fused together in its bright, proper place and usage, and it becomes a very superior and beneficial, indestructible, in the area of forever life. Okay, but like a tempered piece of glass, if you break it up in little little pieces, it goes in a million different pieces. So the true meaning, the inseparable meaning to disbeliever, 
is those who are taking actions that will bring about extinction. So, now, even though, like I gave an example with the parable, that big John, I had two choices. Either I stand back and do nothing and see that village of, say, 50 people die because John is determined, or I kill John. And it was like, it was, well, killing, that's wrong in the eyes of God. No, I'm going to be a believer because in that respect, now I'm doing it under the pretenses of self-defense. Is I know there's women and children over there. I know that Big John, nearly seven foot, they're not going to be able to overpower him. And they don't, they don't have the sword. They don't have to protect himself. And being I become aware of this, I first try the other means of reasoning. I try to talk John out, try to get to the sword. Why is he so mad he wants to kill this village? And he, he doesn't want to hear any rhyme or reason. He's dead set to what he's trying to do. Now, now I have to t invoke that I now have to kill him. I don't like the idea of it, but if I'm going to be about forever life, I mean, there's women and children over there. I have to protect them, even though they're not my children. But as, when you become an adult, you actually are in locked into a contract. When you come as an adult, it is your job, whether it's your child or not, is to pave and protect that pathway to your future generations. And it is in the contract of your those children to say, I will do every aspect, every effort under my part to stay on that path. And if I come off, I find that path because you're paving the path and I'm going to follow it to bring about future evolution so things evolve, things become better, not worse. Because as long as we're heading this way, that's one step away from extinction. So, so if I go one step this way, so when you think of, in terms of that, is I, okay, if I had to go backtrack, one step here, now I have to go one step and then another step. So I'd have to take two steps backwards to get closer to extinction. And it lies, that's why belief is a verb. It, and it's an action. So energy that is in action that is pertaining to extinction. Okay, now we wouldn't say like nuclear. Is if this earth was radioactive, it would eventually kill all living things. So nuclear itself, you know, there's like I said with teaching the wrong way and the right way. Nuclear is the wrong, you know, in terms of teaching, there's a wrong way and there's a right way and then you mix them to two. Nuclear is definitely, without a doubt, was taught first because it is the wrong way of doing things. Are there benefits? Absolutely. But there's more detriment. I mean, like 90 to 10. I mean, there's 90 detrimental things off of it that will lead you to extinction than that 10, 10 items that will leave you 10 steps forward to a forever life. So, just want to bring clarity to believe a believer or disbeliever if you want to be a believer of forever life then you have to do inventory what am i doing so like i said with big john i may feel horrible you know and i may be pissed off i go to john and john i'm pissed off well ever why are you pissed off because now i'm forced to kill you you won't listen to me you want to kill those innocent women and children well, do it, big buddy. You think you're tough enough? And then I stick my knife in his heart. But I would hate every moment of it because if I don't stop him, then I know 50 women and children and men over there are going to die. And then I would drag his carcass over to this village and I would tell them, I had to kill this man. He was going to come over and kill you. I need some answers. I need to find out as to why why he is so upset. Do you recognize this guy? 
Was he here? Was he in a fight with someone? Because I need to resolve this so I don't end up finding another person wanting to come to your village to kill you. I'm about forever life. Can any of you guys help me out? Because I had to kill a guy who I saw as a friend. But because I could not stop and he was determined to come over and kill you, I had to sacrifice him to save you. That action is under the guidelines of belief, a believer. Because I'm trying to save lives. That is a symbolism of forever life. So there's a big difference. Now, between whether, if, if in terms of tomato, it's tomato, it's tomato, it's tomato, tomato. You know, it's like, so belief comes in different forms of it. But the original, the source of belief it comes down to forever life or forever death. Is and if you take things in extreme, out of sorts, out of placement, out of timing, it, in terms of energy cause and effect, it will lead. It will take you backtrack, and it's like each and every step closer to extinction. And if you're killing people for no reason at all. Just because they won't believe that Adam's rib, Eve came from Adam's rib. And it's like, just because you don't believe that concept, maybe you're not on the intelligence level of knowing, because you haven't got to that level yet of understanding what a sperm is, what a, what a woman's egg is. Okay, but if I'm, you know, if a person's just going around killing you just because you don't believe this, you know, Eve came from a rib. That's wrong. If I have to kill, it's because I'm stopping you because the actions in which you're taking is a one step closer taking us to extinction. So that's the big difference between a believer and a disbeliever. And we use our skill sets, we develop them every single day. It's not something that we learn one time and we stop. So, well, I learned that years ago. Okay, well, what do you know beyond beyond that? Well, I don't know. I just, I learned it, that was it. So we, each and every day, we have to take and expand and contract it. Just like our lungs, we take in the air, expand and contract it. As I said, as Albert Einstein. Abraham Lincoln, George Washington. I've had many lifetimes, and there's certain quotes and sayings and things that I leave behind for people to just kind of ponder on and use their objective and creative mind to expand it into something far superior. So that is, why do I do that? Because I want to make sure that everyone gets the best advantages to being successful at being forever life. Because, trust me, you don't want on your resume, you're a professional extinctionist. Extinction is what we see in a museum with T-Rex, raptor, these dinosaurs. It's just the remnants. The remnants. And we'll end it on this note. Okay, this earth, everything of life to of was brought here. So everything you see from planets to insects to trees and vegetation, everything was brought here. If, if, and it's because we have this atmosphere around the Earth. And as we know with asteroids, when it comes into our atmosphere, it gets really, really hot. Okay, so with knowing that with the concept of life, if you got Earth and it's molten hot, what I'm saying is this sixth heaven is Noah's Ark. As we, with the star coming in, it's so bright, it's so hot. It means if there was life on it, it would die. Because it, it, the conditions in which it's coming in is not sustainable to life. So the concept of things just to evolve here is false. Many things, so essentially what is here, what is here is not even 1%. You, you represent less than 1% of the life and things out in the universe. It was brought here, the diversity of things, of thinking, evolutions, so we can all, all 
not just our nation, but all nations, can evolve together in a trinity, a third element of being better, stronger, superior. And that way, when it comes time, when we come out back to them, we can help guide them, we can help lead them, we can help educate them. So there's there's many reasons why you are on the sixth heaven. Is there will be a time that we will be called upon, you know, doing God's work. And we're going to go out and bring hope and faith into those out there that can't figure things out. But if we can't figure things out here and can't get along here, then there's no, it's pointless to even go out there because we don't even have our own house in order. So that's why it's an evolutionary process. So it's more than just you being here. Everything you do on this planet, it all resolves about is all becoming and reaching that high level of functionality. Just like explaining the word believer and disbeliever. From the root word, believe. Which is an evolutionary concept. So with that, well, in this video right here, I do thank you for your time on this 12th day of June, 2017. With that, Godspeed.